Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. When last we spoke, I just finished up building this six-channel trigger sequencer, the big button designed by Look Mum No Computer, which I have called the Hexdrum. And at the end of that episode, I kind of kvetched and complained a little bit about some of the functionality and features. So I have added a whole bunch of new functionality, including a new shift button, as well as MIDI input and through connections to make this a fully fledged, capable digital sequencer. So let me show you how I made these changes and what this thing can do. I began by figuring out the placement of the MIDI in and output jacks, which was not an easy task on this enclosure as I had already packed the connections very tightly. Ultimately, I found I had just enough space on the back of the case if I put them really low on the outer flange. So I drilled some holes for these jacks with a twist drill bit and a big conical step drill bit, which is really handy for drilling larger diameter holes. These just get self-tapping screws into the aluminum, which holds the jacks in really tightly. Next, I found a place for the shift or alternate function button, which is a little bit odd because it makes the front panel asymmetrical, but I think it works pretty well over here in the bottom left corner. Next, we get to do the really interesting part, which is preparing the MIDI input daughter board. And this consists of a 6N138 optocoupler, a silicon diode, and a couple of resistors. And if you add an extra transistor and three resistors, you can also add MIDI through. And I'm just building this on strip board, as it's such a simple circuit, it hardly needs a printed circuit board. Uh, and after that, I cut it down to size, and then solder on some wires to make connections to the external MIDI jacks. The optocoupler arrangement is from the actual MIDI specification uh, that was published in the 80s, and the purpose of it is to electrically separate all of the grounds of your different audio devices so that you don't get ground loops built up across these MIDI cables. Next, I need to add a couple connections to the main Arduino board for serial input, power, and ground, and of course, connect the shift button. The wiring diagram and the schematic of the MIDI input daughter board are available over on my GitHub page, which is linked down below. And over there, you can also find the updated firmware, which adds the MIDI functionality to the Arduino. So with that installed, I can plug in a MIDI cable to the back and start playing some notes out through the trigger outputs via a MIDI sequence or clock the internal sequence via MIDI. These new features really make the sequencer a lot more powerful. On the front panel, we've got this new shift button, which lets us access some additional features for all of the front panel controls. For instance, shift and the big button lets us audition or preview any of the sounds without necessarily adding new notes or sequences. And I've got this hooked up to my new Eurorack sampler. We can also use the MIDI interface to send in MIDI notes and trigger any of the six channels of gates. We can also use it to send a basic sequence and then build more complex sequences on top of it. The fill button works as it did before sending a steady stream of notes out, but with the shift button, we can now use it as a 30 second note roll. I didn't use the delete button too much in the original design because I found it was inconsistent, sometimes unpredictable, so instead I've changed it to a mute. And we can also use it with the shift button as a solo. We can use bank to toggle between two different sequences for each channel. And we can use shift bank to toggle all the channels simultaneously. As before, clear will clear a single channel and shift clear will clear all channels simultaneously. 
We can also use the MIDI through functionality to connect another synthesizer or another MIDI device and play notes out through that. Well, there you have it, a complete overhaul and MIDI adaptation of the big button gate sequencer. I think these new features really complement the sequencer well. It's nice to be able to connect a MIDI clock and have all the devices running on the same signals. And the new sequencing features are quite easy to use so far. I'm enjoying using them. They're making it fun to improvise and change over new sequences uh, and think of new ideas in real time. To add these features, I've completely rewritten the Arduino C code for this project, and I have put that up on my GitHub page, so if you're interested in making this modification or building your own, find that link down in the description. Before I go, I have to say a huge shout out and thanks to everyone who has joined me over on Patreon. It really means a lot to me to have your support. It means that I'm able to come up with these projects, take the time to build them, make the videos, and share them with you. So thanks so much for your support. And if you're interested in getting a little bit of bonus content, as well as early access to all of my new videos, head over to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. Well, I think that about does it for today. I'm going to get back to making some banging acid house tunes on my synth. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.